started. Welcome everyone. Good evening. Um, Krista Muller, Director of Peters Valley School of Craft and um, this week's lecture we're um, presenting Heather Beck. Um, but first I want to acknowledge that our uh, library lectures really began as a venture with the Pike County Library in Pike County, um, Pennsylvania. And it's this program is funded by the Richard L. Snyder Fund and the Greater Pike County Community Foundation. And I'm very, very grateful for the fact that both the Pike County Library and the foundation have let us um, do this digitally, given that we've got the pandemic. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with Peters Valley, it's just the most amazing place in Layton, New Jersey. And we teach immersive craft classes um, during the summer and we have a youth art program and we have a gallery and exhibitions and a retail store and an amazing craft fair that this year is going to happen virtually in October. So tonight, we welcome you all. Thank you for joining us and we welcome Heather Beck. And Heather became a studio assistant in the Fine Metal Studio? No, woodworking. In the woodworking, that's what I thought. That's why I'm asking mm -hmm. because I yeah. remember woodworking. In 2006, right after graduating from UMass Dartmouth, She's had her work in our gallery store and will be joining our virtual um, craft fair in October. Her studio ranges from hand textured collections inspired by the natural world that she loves to explore to custom pieces that symbolize the magic in her clients' lives. She loves the stories behind every custom piece and works with each client to design an object that represents their unique truth. Sometimes it's a story of love. Sometimes it's a story of achievement. Sometimes it's about needing a talisman that can guide you through a storm. Whatever your story brings someone to her studio, when it, whatever story brings someone to her studio, she feels honored to hear it and to be part of manifesting the next chapter. Another very important part of Heather's work is teaching. She holds beginner and advanced metals classes in her studio in East Hampton, Massachusetts, and has a wonderful group of private students who are making an inspiring work. Prior to COVID, she was traveling extensively around the state, teaching adult and teen metals workshops. Obviously now, you're probably at home a lot, right? Um, Heather yeah. so, um, works with scout groups. And um, if you wanna learn more about her teaching, you can visit her website, which we will post at the end of this lecture. Um, but one really interesting thing about Heather is that she's also been a beekeeper for 14 years, which is pretty amazing. So thank you for doing that for our planet. And um, tonight we welcome you and thank you for joining us and thank you all for joining us. Heather, take it away. Oh, wait, what? before I forget, um, for all of you that are here in the chat, if you wanna tell us where you're tuning in from, we'd love to hear that. Yeah. Um, but if you have questions, uh, if you scroll to the bottom, we have a Q&A box and you can put your questions in and at the end of the lecture, we'll, we'll answer as many as we can. So thank you. Right. Take it away, Heather. Okay, let me just transfer the screen share. Boom. Share it and make it big. All right. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. There we go. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. I'm Heather Beck. I'm um, the maker behind Heather Beck Designs. Uh, thank you for being here. And thank you so much um, to Rachel and Kristen and all of Peters Valley for having me. Um, let's see. So I am the person who believes in magic. Uh, it's all around us. My mission is to explore and translate the magic into objects. I create objects that hold deep personal meaning for my clients and myself. I've always been fascinated with alchemy. Actually, in undergrad, my entire thesis was about it. Um, most of you, if you've ever even heard of alchemy, it's, uh, it's when you think about turning lead into gold. Well, I was more interested in the thought process of turning like impure thoughts into the most pure thoughts. And now how it translates in my work is transmuting stories and energy into three-dimensional objects. So through the stories that my clients bring to me and my own personal stories, 
um, is how I make work. Custom work. All right, here's me in the studio. Um, I'm gonna talk about one of my favorite pieces that really changed the way that I make work. Um, this is the first buffalo piece I ever made. I'm really, I, I use buffalo and bison interchangeably, but I know it's actually bison. Um, for this purpose, I'm just gonna call it a buffalo necklace. Uh, so this woman, uh, Donna Beck, no relation, came to me and said, you know, I really want to make a commemorative piece to honor my father. He died like a year before we, she commissioned the piece. It was several years ago. And so she came to me with this story how her and her siblings, I think there were like eight of them, they would travel in this van across the country um, to go to various KOAs. They went across the Great Plains. And it was their dad's birthday on this particular vacation. And they went to the country store and they emptied out their pockets and they dumped all the change on the counter. And they said to the guy behind the counter, what can we get our dad with this amount of money? And he was like, I don't know, what about this plastic buffalo? And they were like, yeah, yeah, that's great. And they gave it to the dad and he loved it. He was a traveling salesman. He carried it with him in his suit coat pocket everywhere he went. I mean, the back legs fell off of it. It just like had tons of wear and tear. And um, he, when he passed away, he was actually cremated with the bison. Um, and my old housemate, Katie, um, who is a glass blower, blew these glass beads with his ashes in them. So we took this amazing story. And this, this piece is like five and a half inches wide and it goes like completely across her chest. She's a very petite woman. And she said, I really want the richness and the texture of the animal. So I created this piece and I was like, I really want to make more work about story. Here we go, a little bit of design work. So this blue uh, bird on your right hand side is a red tailed hawk that is in wax. So most of my work starts as design work in my sketchbook. She picked the drawing at the top. Um, I totally understand why <laughs> the other drawings are not as strong, but this one is super great because she wanted it to be the four points on the compass and that was how we got that done uh, and so i carved it in wax and then we'll talk a little bit about lost wax casting later in the lecture um, and then it gets magically transformed into silver so this deep meaning behind the red-tailed hawk she was doing an incredible amount of transpersonal work um, with a shaman. She was doing all kinds of meditative work. She's got background um, in Native American studies. So this whole piece came together with that story. Now we have our elephant pieces for my friend Asia. Um, this piece represents her and her firstborn child. And there's actually a third elephant because um, they just had a newborn that's being added to the back end of that little other elephant. Um, so in my work, I really, really love texture. I'm going to talk a lot about texture and just capturing different surface treatments. Sometimes it's carved directly into wax and then it gets cast in metal. And then this was actually hand hammered by tools that I created myself um, in a process called chasing and repose. Here's another power object. So I'm really excited about power objects. Um, I'm here to transmute and focus the energy in the story. So this story was, this is a rune, like an old Viking rune that my client who is a therapist really needed to do deep transpersonal work with. So I actually really appreciate and have been studying runes for a very long time. So we really connected over this symbolism. Um, and I was able to carve it in wax and cast it in 14 karat gold and he gets to do his work with it and it was our connection. All right, so this peace sign necklace is sterling silver and it has a bunch of really beautiful stones in it. The story behind this work for this power object, this is also a huge piece. It lives like right dead center on the chest. This is a remake of a piece that my client's wife had been wearing for 20 years. She's so invested in the symbol 
Um, and he said, I really want you to remake it in sterling. Her piece is made of some other metal. I want to kind of up-level it. And I said, well, you know, Sue is a multifaceted, wonderful human who is a breath worker and a yoga um, instructor and among other wonderful things. She might want to update her symbol a little bit. Do you think we could kind of loop her into the conversation? And he was like, well, I don't know. I think, I think maybe that might be a good idea. So we talked to Sue and I pitched the idea that maybe we could do some chakra symbols um, and healing work with all the different stones. And so she actually picked them out perfectly, like just rattled them right off and knew exactly what she wanted. And then I made the piece. All right, we're gonna talk about process. So here's me working at the bench. This is uh, during COVID. I had moved my studio home and I was working out of the dining room, which is where you see me now. Um, and I start my work if I'm gonna do casting in wax. I'll cut a wax blank so it has a hole in it already. And then I shape it based on my design to the spec. And this piece um, is a Z ring. So it's a men's signet. And so it takes a lot of time to carve very intricate work. Um, so I keep checking the drawing. I'm checking with all different tools. I can check with light, like you can see at the bottom right hand part of this, um, this piece right here to see the depth. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm really, I'm trying to go for like a crisp, clean line that still has the handmade quality. So we want it to look like this. So as you can see, it's, it's not like it's been machined and it still has a handcrafted feel to it. So this is sterling silver, so this has been cast. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about casting in a minute. This piece right here is an engagement ring that this gentleman Kyle had me commission for his, um, his future wife. It is rose gold and it has two rough diamonds. So the first one is a, a coral a raw diamond and it's rose cut and then there's a salt and pepper diamond and we were going for different motion. It's almost like binary stars. So maybe one is further away from the other and they're in motion. So balanced asymmetry was a part of this. I did a satin finish on it and it's in rose gold. But as you can see over here, we went through various stages of design work um, to get there. And then as you can see in here, there's a little number, there's 400. So we were trying to figure out um, the best design and the right colors and the right weight of the metal and all of that goes into calculation with the client's budget. So I have to kind of balance. And one of the great things about um, rough diamonds is that you can get a much larger stone um, with way more character than you could even imagine. Exactly the color you want. Diamonds come in all different colors. It's amazing, rainbow colors. Um, and so we picked these out because they were exactly what he wanted and sunk them right in there. And one of the things that I find really important in design work, other than it being balanced, is most of my clients are very active um, and they don't want like prongs and they don't want things sticking up. So I try to sink stones as low as I possibly can in the work so that you're wearing the work and you don't even notice it's on. It's seamless, it's part of you, it's everyday wear. It's like just, it's it's this beautiful power object that you don't have to think about, but is always a constant reminder of whatever the story is that you're trying to tell or hold. Here we go. We've got this beautiful octopus ring. This was one of the funnest pieces I've made. Um, my client's story for this was he wanted a rough diamond. So he loved the idea. It's again, it's rose cut. And then his, um, partner is their familiar for animals that they're really interested in um, is an octopus and we have that in common I really I love octopi I have a full sleeve over here with an octopus on it so I connect with them I connect with the story um, 
and I carved this all in wax uh, to start and then it was cast in 14 karat white gold. And I've sunk a couple of little tiny sapphires in two of the suckers to give it a little extra sparkle from the undersea. Um, but yeah, it's a really quite a fun piece to work on. Uh, and then there'll be wedding rings uh, coming up very soon for this couple that will fit right into and underneath that ring. Right. Um, this is a non-traditional wedding uh, wedding piece that I, wedding pieces that I made. My friends Ben and Carolyn. Um, I, I met them the day that they met, and I watched their relationship grow, and it was absolutely beautiful. And wedding rings didn't really do it for them. It wasn't one of the wasn't one of the symbols that really rang true for them. Um, but one thing that they really do share is their love of whiskey and, and symbol, and they wanted to have ceremony at their wedding in a different way. So they used the cups in the ceremony, and then on every anniversary, they take the cups out and they polish them, and they have a toast to them, and I hope they use them more often than that. But um, this was really fun because I spent a lot of time in college uh, doing hollowware. So this was raised, these two pieces were raised from flat sheet. I think they were a three inch disc of copper and you heat it and you cool it. And once it's soft, you can hammer it while it's cold over a form. So it went from this all the way up and then I soldered a silver lip onto it and they've been waxed. So they're safe to drink out of as long as they stay waxed. Um, and then they asked to have this beautiful firefly design uh, laser etched onto the bottom that a friend of theirs had designed. But as you can see, there's a theme in my work. There are several themes. Um, wedding is kind of the bread and butter. And it's, it's so incredibly important for me to capture the essence of the couple in their rings and make it really, it, make it them, you know, make it just like them. Um, these are wedding rings for my friends, Pat and Mary. They have been friends with me for a really long time. And they actually, they got engaged uh, when they were on vacation with a coin that I had made. Um, I stamped a copper coin that said, come waste your time with me. And under the crescent moon and the Venus in the sky, they got engaged. And so these represent the night that they got engaged with the crescent moon. And the Venus uh, are rough diamonds. They're yellow for Venus. And then here is Mary's matching engagement ring. So again, we've got rose, uh, rose gold. We've got a rough diamond that's incredibly darkened salt and pepper, which I adore. And they go together really well. Um, Let's see what do we got there. Yeah, so those are all there. All right. This piece, these pieces right here, um, are part of the Legacy Jewelry series, which is a new kind of, um, it's a new category that I have in my work, which is incredibly important. Um, the diamond in this engagement ring was Lizzie's mom's. Um, so I cut it out of her mom's old ring that doesn't fit anymore. And I got to the diamond. So it was more cost effective to use like family gold and diamonds and other precious gems to turn into new work. So we're recycling and we're helping save the planet. Um, so I love all of those things. But this particular piece has kind of a knife edge coming up onto the edge of the stone. And that was an element that was in Lizzie's mom's ring. Um, and we wanted to bring it into this new work. So she wanted a really thin band and then another very small band so they wouldn't be terribly wide on the finger. Uh, and these are 14 karat white gold and an old mine cut diamond. And then Dan got another they're pretty big um, 14 karat uh, men's band. And look at how beautiful they look on their hands. 
and they are just the loveliest humans and I was so honored to make them this work. Um, so again, we're gonna talk about legacy jewelry and what that means right, right now. <laughs> um, here is a piece that was created. This is also part of legacy jewelry. Um, this was a piece that was created for this gentleman, Ben. Um, and he, hold on a sec, I lost my thing. Um, he wanted a branch ring. He wanted the branches to be two branches going into one branch for the symbolism. He wanted red diamonds and white diamonds speckled throughout the branches, but he wanted no texture. And I love texture. So it was a bit of a challenge for me, but I got to do some really interesting carving. I even set a little tiny red diamond on the top of that little branch up there. Um, and we had schemed and talked about what he was gonna do for a proposal. And he was like, well, I'll come out your way to Western Mass and it'll be great. And I was like, oh, are you gonna propose like on the mountain or you know, somewhere? And he said, actually, I was thinking about proposing in your studio. Oh, do you think that that's possible? And I was like, what? So we figured it out and he's not very good at lying. So he had to kind of not lie and say that it was about beer and come out here where we have really wonderful breweries. And he went to abandoned building brewery and took her on a tour. And he, uh, he brought her to my studio. I was like, oh, I wanna go see my friend Heather, who's a maker. And I had decoy jewelry set up for her to look at. And she was like, oh, I really love these rings. And then she said, well, how do you feel about this one? And he proposed in my studio, you guys. He came in here and she was completely floored. And I had champagne set up for them. And it was just kind of a, I mean, I never thought that that would happen in my space, but it was such a magical, magical time. All right. Let's talk about legacy jewelry. So I'm assuming that most of you don't know and are not professional metalsmiths um, how casting works. So lost wax casting is a really, uh, it's a pretty old art form where you create your original piece like these rings up here in wax. And then the orange part that you see is a sprue. And then you attach them to a rubber base. And then they get this kind of tailpipe thing that goes over the top and you fill it with plaster of Paris, which we call investment. And then you've got a solid chunk of rubber, wax, steel, and plaster. You take the rubber off, it goes in a kiln, all the wax melts out, and you're left with a negative that's exactly the same shape as your original object. These particular rings were the very first legacy jewelry pieces I ever made. And what I mean by that is, we're trying to take jewelry and diamonds and, and gemstones that maybe you inherited from your Nana or your great, great aunt or someone in your family that loves you. And they're like, you should have this jewelry, but maybe it's not quite your taste. Maybe it's not the right style or it doesn't fit you. And it's just kicking around in a drawer. Well, I propose to take that jewelry and melt it down and use the gold and the diamonds and turn it into a new piece. So we're like helping um, make sure that mining doesn't happen uh, as much and we get to recycle the metal, it's heavily recycled and we can sink the diamonds from the old work into the new work into a modern day um, design. So here's the process. So I'm heating the metal up here and then I pour the metal into the plaster and you can see at the bottom, that's what we call the button and then it's attached to the sprue, that stick thing, and then the rings. So that whole piece gets cast at once, and then we cut the sprue off of the rings, we release it from there, we clean it up, and then I set those diamonds in there and polish it up, and we have two rings that have been made from both families' gold into this wedding band, uh, into the set of wedding bands. So I think that that is incredible magic, um, if that's not alchemy, I'm not really sure what is. So that is what I do. That's my favorite. And then here we are moving into production work. All right. You guys have probably seen this on my website. These are my arrow bracelets. Um, they're one of the oldest uh, 
designs that I have for production work. Um, I've been an archer for a really long time. And also I'm a Sagittarius, sun sign. Um, and so this piece reminds me, every, it's an everyday piece for me, I wear it on my right wrist, um, of the power and the zen that goes into archery and shooting and just like direction forward, just like arrows in general as a symbol um, are super powerful. So I've had a lot of uh, clients really relate to the symbol and they wear it every day and they draw their power. You know, we're talking about power objects here. Um, so it's infused with that. There they are on the wrist. I like when my bracelets are really tight and don't move. I know a lot of people like to have them jangle around, but I want my stuff to stay put. So there's a lot of heavily uh, textured work in here. I use my chasing tools, which I'll talk about in a minute, but I made the tools that do that. And um, this special hammer to do the backside. And as was mentioned earlier, I have been a beekeeper for 14 years. These are bee rings. Um, bees were huge for me when I was in college. I, I made, like I said before, um, when I was making alchemy work, uh, my whole thesis was about bees and bugs and cicadas and things. And bees have always been um, like a shining light in my world. And then I became a beekeeper and I became even more in love with them. So, so I keep them because they need to be planted. The honey is an added bonus, but they show up in my work a lot. So I have this bee stamp and I stamp it on a lot of things. Um, and people really connect with it and, and really vibe with it. So they're here is um, our, the snake bracelets. So this was a piece that started as a custom piece, um, which I'll show you in a sec. This was made for um, this woman, Nancy, who's a dream worker. She's amazing. She's so magic. She had had a dream that these snakes came up and like surrounded her and they were whispering to her in Spanish. And they said, um, they told her that she was a healer uh, and she woke up and like wrote it down and called me and said I need to have a snake bracelet created and we designed it together and I made the very first one and I, I made a mold of it and I said you know these need to be these are so powerful they need to be kind of everywhere um, so now I can make them in all different sizes these are the waxes on the right hand side here and as you can see they're split in the back so I can make them any size I'd like so if it's too big as a size seven you know, we can make it a six and it's just, we weld the wax together. It's much easier to work in wax than it is um, in metal at this point. Then they get cast and then boom, they're in sterling silver. So these have, um, which eyes are these? I think these are amethyst eyes in here, but I can uh, create them in any kind of gold. They can be cast in bronze, pink, silver, and sterling. Um, and this one has her engraving on the inside and again I like these really tight and I like the um, the wrist uh, the the head and the tail to be up so that you can see them so as you can see nature is, is hugely influential um, and so these are these are my familiars that I've been making this was the first one this is um, a humpback whale I actually made this for my partner Rachel and this is a brooch um, and so I used eight different chasing tools to get the texture. So I didn't want it to be like an exact replica of, of the whale. I wanted it to have the essence and the vibe and the feel of it um, and that you get to take it with you and that that's your animal, like that's, that's your thing um, for, your, for your power. And then that translated to this whale right here which was also a custom. So sometimes they go back and forth. Sometimes I'll start with production and they'll scale up to custom. And sometimes they'll go from a custom piece down to production, just because themes are so similar. And I get really excited about a piece and I wanna really expand on it. Uh, so as you can, this is a, um, a really fun double brooch. Uh, you can pull it out and actually repair it. It's, it's a pretty cool design made by Ken Bova, His, the design is Ken Bova's, and I learned it at a workshop. It's a very cool design. Um, so here we have some familiars. As you can see on my, my messy bench, here are all my chasing tools. I, I created most of these with all different textures on them. 
so that I can make the, the bison and the whales and there's some fox ones. And they're all animals that have deep personal meaning to me. I have a story for all of the different animals that I have in my work, in my production work. Um, the bison here uh, had been coming to me in dreams. And then actually we went to Yellowstone a couple years ago and I hadn't seen any bison. And on day three of us hiking through the backwoods of Yellowstone, three bison appeared and <laughs> they were very close to us. I mean, they were many yards away, but I was very startled. Um, and they started walking towards us and I sang to them and and they moved off the path <laughs> and we walked very gingerly. We kept an eye on them with the binoculars and they followed us to the campsite. Uh, and they just kind of hung out and they like were rubbing their little heads on the trees and like they're, you know, they were shedding cause it was spring. Um, and they just hung out with us while we made a fire. And I was like, this is the most magic day. And there's a waterfall in the background and just like nature is so powerful. Um, and, and animals, especially of this size, are even just, they're so magnificent. I, I, can, I can only hope to capture them in the work that I do. And that's really what I'm trying to do is, is to, to hold their essence um, in the metal with, with texture and magic. Here we have uh, me walking through the woods and stopping every couple of feet to look very closely at mushrooms sticking onto trees. Um, whether they're coming out of the ground, but mostly I'm interested in the ones that I can like run my hands down on the trees to make the like that kind of sound. Uh, so I made these fairy shelf earrings. I have fairy shelf necklaces um, and I'm trying to expand upon that. But these were really interesting to make because they're formed out of a flat sheet and they're they're pierced with um, a drill bit and I put my saw frame through and I cut out each of those little tiny shelves and I push them out from the back and I, I make them round so it's all one piece of metal and then the only soldering I do is to put the post on the back but covered in texture. Left? Okay. Um, I really love birch as a tree, you know, I love trees and this this piece was originally a custom piece and now it is um, in my production line. I love to create the texture, the soft texture here, um, and make metal do things that it doesn't look like it should be able to do, like create these same bumps. All right, here we are at the top of Mount Tom, which is in my town here in East Hampton, Massachusetts. It is one of the most amazing places. I hike it a lot. Um, and there's a star, as you can see in this photo, at the top that they light up during the winter. And now since it's been COVID, they have it lit up all the time and it is such a beacon of hope and so lovely. Um, and I made a whole series of rings about it. So we've got these Mount Tom rings where I sunk a little tiny diamond so that the star can be on. So when you're stressed out or like feeling overwhelmed, you can look at your hand and say, it's all gonna be okay, the light is on. And it's, it's just really grounding energy. You know, I wear my Mount Tom ring all the time. All right, teaching is a huge part of my work. It is so important for me to pass on the skills that I have learned. I learn, I've learned from many different teachers. I went to school for metal smithing. I have a mentor. I have a couple of really amazing private students, but mostly what I've been doing is teaching at libraries all over the state for the last almost three years. So I teach bookmark making workshops. I teach um, ornaments. I've taught Girl Scout troops, all these different folks. But look at how excited that kid is. He was so pumped. He said to me that my class was more fun than Disneyland. And I was like, I can retire. <laughs> he was so into it. Um, these pictures on the right are demos that I did. And then here is one of my students uh, patining the copper, so we'll throw it in liver of sulfur, which is a patina, um, and it blackens the metal, so it oxidizes the surface, and then we scrub off the top surface so that we get a two-tone effect. So it'll be like black and also penny bright copper. And here are all my tools that I bring to the library. So within an hour and a half, my students have a completed project, they've learned a new skill, and the whole point for me 
empowerment. They've never learned how to do this before. I do a quick demo and I sit with them and I show them exactly how to use the tools. And then they're like, wow. And also they haven't been on their cell phones and they're like doing an ancient craft that we like don't need electricity for. So here are some examples of the copper bookmarks that student students have made. Um, this one over here on the right is pretty funny with the powdered wig, I don't know. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's, it's so wonderful to see what they create because they have such an open canvas. Um, so they learn the technique and then they're really free to make whatever they want. Here's some Girl Scouts hanging out in the studio learning how to make, I think they were making pendants in this workshop. And look at them all, they're so darling. So I have workshops in the studio. I teach at libraries when it's not COVID. Um, I have this wonderful private student. I usually have adult private students. I know I only have pictures of children today, which is um, just, you know, what I had. Uh, but this is Jason. He's amazing. He's eight, and he is my youngest private student I've ever had. And he said, I want the buffalo stamp on my ring in silver, six millimeters wide, and then we figured out what size he was. And in two days, he made this bison ring. He soldered it himself, he stamped it himself, he patinaed it himself. And so I will say to you, you too can make a ring. Um, I'm gonna be doing new workshops. Uh, I wanna do um, wedding band workshops for couples and you make each other's ring in the studio. And I think it's the same kind of COVID risk and everyone will be in masks. So it's kind of like, having one private student, but I think it'd be really fun to do um, a one day workshop with some couples uh, and see what we can create together. So um, this is the work that I make. It's, it's magic, it's nature, it's story. It's really, it's, it's why I'm on the planet. Um, I make because I, I have to, and it's, it's what I'm driven to do. Um, and, and I love it. So I'm really lucky that this is my job full time uh, and that I get to spread my, my, my joy with you um, through making and through teaching. And um, I just wanna thank you all so much for coming to my lecture. Uh, it means a lot to me. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of people. So it's nice, even though I can't see you, to know that you're there and that you're, you're sharing in my story. Um, and also, uh, since we can't really go to the Peters Valley Craft Fair in person this year, it's coming up in October, and you'll be able to connect with all of us on Zoom, just like now. Uh, and you'll be able to meet new artists that you've never met before. You can see all of my work um, and purchase it if you'd like. Uh, and you'll, you'll get to just experience a whole new way of doing craft fairs in a safe and socially distant way. So thank you again for coming. I love you a lot and uh, I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, Heather. That was great. Um, so <clears throat> for those of you, if you think of a question, go ahead and pop it into the Q&A. We have um, a question from Beryl Peron Feller who was our um, Fine Metals Studio Assistant a couple years ago. So hi, Beryl. Hi, um, Beryl. She asked the question, at the beginning you mentioned the alchemy of thought, specifically impure to pure thoughts. Can you talk a little bit more about what you mean in terms of purity and how does that come through in your metal work? Yes, um, so glad you asked that question. I think when you're, when you're talking about energy and you're talking about magic, you really need to be super aligned with what you're trying to put forth into the world. And if you have any kind of distractions of thought, and if I were to like be like over here and thinking about some mundane whatever, and then I'm trying to like make this amazing piece for someone, I don't want to put that into the work. I need to be solely focused on what it is that I'm trying to create and really just continue to like pull from the universe um, the right thoughts and the right vibration and energy to put into the work. So mostly like cutting out distractions when I'm making. That's great. Thank you. Uh, 
Margalit Schindler is mm -hmm. asking, saying, yay, first, thank you, Heather. How often do you modify stones to fit a design rather than the other way around? Oh, good question. Um, I never modify stones. <laughs> uh, I usually build the piece around the stone. So if I have a piece that's in production that normally takes a five millimeter stone, that, that's what that um, ring takes. I can probably open it up a little bit to like a six millimeter, depending on what size the bezel is. But I build, build all of the rings around the stones that I make. That's great. Yeah, Thank lapidary you. work is super different, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting thought to take um, precious heirlooms and then melt them down into mm -hmm. something. I've thought about that before. I've always been afraid to do it. It's like... Yeah, you know, yeah. The magic is super important in that. I mean, and like, if you've, got, if you've got your Nana's piece, right, and it doesn't suit you because it's Art Deco and you're not really into Art Deco, um, we just get to use like the the material raw material that's kicking around in a drawer but you get to bring nana's essence and her energy with you and you remember that as you're wearing it and that's the most important piece like the heritage the like ancestral lineage of it like all your peeps like it's it's so important to like bring them with you but for, for me anyway thank you mm -hmm. thank you so much I think that's it for the questions. Um, if, if you want to find out more, look in the chat box, heatherbeckdesigns.com. And I hope to see you all at our craft fair. If you want Me uh, too. information about how to get onto that, go to the petersvalley.org website under events and you'll see the craft fair and you'll find out all about how to register. That was awesome and inspiring. Thank you so much for sharing your work and your inspiration with us tonight. And I hope everyone will um, continue to join us. And thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye.